Sir Topham Hatt was in his office being measured for a new suit. When he heard the news, he left immediately for the docks. Sir Topham Hatt knew that any delay at the docks could cause trouble. You have made a terrible mess, Cranky, he said sternly. I'm sorry, sir, Cranky whispered. You engines will have to stay here tonight until Harvey clears up this mess in the morning. Cranky's heart sank as Salty uttered those fateful words. That reminds me of a story. It was a bitter cold winter. The brave little ship was stuck until the ice melted the next spring. He barely made it round the Cape. After a hundred scary days at sea without a scratch, he sailed into port and crashed his bow not 15 feet from my buffers. Luckily, no one was hurt. Except my ears, wailed Cranky. Salty spent all night telling tales of powerful storms, daring rescues, and brave little ships. And when the sun rose, he was still talking. And talking. And talking. I can't take any more, groaned Cranky. <coughs> Harvey the crane engine arrived. Sir Topham Hatt sent me to help clear away this mess, he puffed proudly. Cranky was so pleased the engines would be going soon, he forgot to be cranky. I'll never misbehave again, he promised, as long as I don't have to listen to any more of Salty's stories. And after Harvey and the workmen had cleared the wreckage, Cranky worked hard all day. He carefully loaded the trucks, helped speed the engines on their way, and he said please and thank you. This is new, puffed Thomas, but he had spoken too soon. Cranky couldn't help himself. It was nice while it lasted, said Percy, and all the engines laughed. But Cranky was still cranky. <laughs>